Do you ever have that thing where um, when you get together with your family or potentially even with your friends or whomever you have that moment with where like everybody sits around at a table to like eat food or something or even play a game and you all sit at the same spots? You all like, oh, that's, you know, Joe's seat. That's mom's seat. That's dad's seat. That's my sister's seat. This is my seat. This is whatever, like whomever you, have you ever had that experience? I, in my family, we did, we all had like the seats we continued to sit in. And if we look at life like that, we are all, if we all just continue to sit in the same seats, then we continue to sit in the same perspective. Hi, I'm Kate, your host of the She's Hungry podcast. Every week I find myself down countless rabbit holes. I am absolutely one of those people that has 50 tabs equally open in my web browser and my brain. I'm reading books, reading articles, listening to interviews, comparing studies to snippets of podcasts and watching YouTube. And yes, even TikTok when I want to learn something quickly. I'm quite literally obsessed with investigating the world we live in. And so much like my browser history on this show, anything goes. I'll share stories of my 30 something self living nomadically in my Sprinter van alongside the latest research in behavioral psychology. We'll talk about therapy, inner child work, and what does it actually mean to do the work everyone goes on about. I'll share restaurants I'm loving, astrology happenings, and my latest human design downloads, probably from my best friend. For me, that's what being hungry is all about. Insatiable curiosity for this world, its diversity, and how we are co-creating a better one together. That's what we'll unpack here. This is understanding and storytelling meets brave conversations and even bolder questions. This is the She's Hungry podcast. All right. Hi, and welcome back to an episode. Whoa. Oh, God. I can tell I'm out of practice on this. Of the She's Hungry podcast. Uh, I have been, I wouldn't say putting off recording this episode, but um, if any of you follow me on Instagram, then you know that I tried to relaunch the She's Hungry podcast in November on my birthday. And fun fact, even though you own a, or like you have ownership or it has been previously yours and whatever capacity, in this case, it was the She's Hungry podcast, the first iteration um, that was archived on my like iTunes connect, whatever you want to call it. Uh, even though it was mine on like archived, it was mine. iTunes flagged the new iteration of this and, uh, they were like, Hey, we have to make sure that you're not like taking somebody else's show. And I was like, wait a second. It is quite literally like the, the thing that you're showing me that you're like, hey, this already exists. We have to make sure you're not stealing somebody else's stuff. We have to make sure. And I'm like, yeah, that artwork that you're that you're seeing um, or that you're showing me. Yeah, that's mine. It's on. It's linked to my account anyway. Um, so that happened. And so they were like, yeah, it'll take 24 to 48 hours for us to approve this. So I was like, great. I've spent all morning putting this together. Um, and like telling people about it and sharing it online and then it's not going to come out. Great. Great. Uh, then I finally put it to bed because hello, it's my 33rd birthday and I want to go have fun or, and like take care of myself and do the things that I had planned for the day. Uh, and then I get a text message from a friend of mine that says, Hey, your episode's live, but it sounds funky. And I was like, what do you? what do you mean my episode is live? Like what, what, what is that even about? And, uh, I cut lo and behold, I went and I looked and the new iteration of the podcast was not only live, but the episode that had 
I had recorded um, was attached, but it wouldn't play. It was playing fine on my end. It was playing fine um, on my computer, on Adobe Audition, all these things. And yet it still wouldn't play via um, iTunes or Spotify or any of those platforms. So it was like, not only did I got, get knocked down once, but I got knocked down twice. And, you know, in, and by that point it was like two o'clock. And so most of the day I'd gone and I had started this like journey because <laughs> it felt like a journey at that point to get this episode of the podcast out. And it just wasn't going to happen that day. And I was like, you know what? I could make this mean something like an omen. Like maybe I shouldn't release the podcast. Maybe it's too early. Maybe I'm not ready. Um, I could make this mean a whole slew of things. Instead, I'm just going to put this down. And I'm going to let it go for another day. And here we are. Welcome. <laughs> we are finally here. Uh, yeah. And so what's funny also about this is that after that episode came out, I, ha I was like, oh, well, I already have this recorded. I'll just figure out what's happening with it and then I'll re-release it and whatever. And But I started go to go back and listen to that episode. And I was like, you know what? there feels like there's a different, there's something different inside of me that has to be said and, and has to come out now. And so I was like, maybe this episode will be like a, a surprise. This was supposed to be the first episode of the She's Hungry podcast episode somewhere down is like some Easter egg, whatever, whatever they call that um, down the line. But right now I feel like I need to talk about something else as the first episode. And essentially, um, it's that uh, I was putting so much emphasis and pr essentially pressure on myself for this to be right, like whatever that means, you know, right. And I, there's so many values inside of myself that this um, expression of me, that's the podcast, it gets like would miss out on completely if I just keep sitting down to make sure that it's right. And so obviously, yes, this will be the first episode of the She's Hungry podcast. But really, when it comes to the content and what it is that this podcast will essentially cover as far as like topics and things like that. I'm going to have that start in January because I think it's important that especially this time of year when we are, you know, it is so easy. And I just sent a text message out to my family because like gifts and I live on the opposite side of the country and there's just stress and unwarranted complications and stories that are being made up and guilt and shame just unnecessarily um, showing up this time of year. And it, we equally, like everybody's talking about, you know, after Thanksgiving, what we're thankful for. And then, you know, this, this time of year is also about family and about togetherness. And it's so interesting because these things um, these dualities, like they live side by side, but it is so much, I think, easier for us to focus on scarcity or what we don't have or what's not going right or what we didn't get accomplished, uh, what we want to change in the new year, you know, and New Year's resolutions, like all of that stuff. I think the intention is in a good place, but I also think that there's a missed perspective that instead of focusing on how we can change or even just how we can do better or um, what we're doing right, that it, it has this um, what we're doing 
to it instead of who we are and who we're being. And so I think there's this missed opportunity that instead of trying to quantify like action or lack of action in a positive or negative way to look at resourcing or internal resources that we have that we can refound like reset a foundation within ourselves in and use that as something to propel us positively or differently into the new year. And so my gift or to myself really, but I think, I think it would, this kind of exercise would be really important for everybody, which is why I'm going to bring it here. Um, recently I've been a part of a book club and we're reading Lynn twist. It, um, that's the author, but her book is called soul of money. And this beautiful section of the book talks about um, resourcing and not just about financial resourcing, but these innate resources that we all have available to us at any given time internally that we as a society and then more importantly, personally, completely diminish or miss out on because we're so focused on you know, these resources that society or, you know, whatever family you're a part of or whatever friend group you're a part of, like these resources that we have available to us, you know, these, these assets. And like, for instance, a couple of them that aren't money are like a resource of resilience, which is what I'm going to talk a little bit about today. Um, and a resource of courage, a resource of community that um, the actual exercise that she talks about in the book is thinking about individual people that love you and support you unconditionally and that each of those people are actually a resource in your life for support, for um, encouragement, for whatever those things are. But then other um, resources are like your generosity and they're not just also um, adjectives but your, uh, your creativity, they're just things that you can utilize within yourself or that are always infinitely available to you that have nothing to do with your financial situation. Um, because obviously the book is about soul of money, but I thought, you know, instead of sitting down and trying to make this first episode or this iteration of the show, right. And what would be more beneficial for not only myself to practice or to hear, but maybe as these episodes come out, what would be beneficial potentially for other people to hear and focus on this time of year when I think it is just so easy to get caught up in what we didn't do, what we didn't accomplish, what we don't have the money for what we, you know, want to change. I think even resolutions, like I think there's a healthy amount of, you know, resolutions are for the birds attitude out there. Uh, But I don't, but I also think that there's not been a good uh, supplementation for the attitude of resolution because undeniably there's newness. Obviously it's a new year. But there's, you don't need to bring anything new about yourself. You don't need like new year, new you, new changes, new whatever. What if we, you know, um, something that I said recently with a, in a conversation with a friend of mine is like, we've, you know, do you ever have that thing where um, when you get together with your family or potentially even with your friends or whomever you have that moment with where like everybody sits around at a table to like eat food or something or even play a game and you all sit at the same spots. You all like, oh, that's, you know, Joe's seat. That's mom's seat. That's dad's seat. That's my sister's seat. This is my seat. This is whatever, like whomever you, have you ever had that experience? I, in my family, we did, we all had like the seats we continued to sit in. 
And if we look at life like that, we are all, if we all just continue to sit in the same seats, then we continue to sit in the same perspective. And so lately it's like when, you know, all of the good things that we have, when we start to recognize them can feel like a molehill next to the mountain of guilt or shame or lack or scarcity that's also coming up because we've been piling that mountain up probably all year. I mean, think about it. Like it's so much easier to, and so much more available, especially given the world that we live in right now. Um, and so much more, you know, misery loves company, part of the conversation to stack up all of this scarcity and the things that you don't have, or that you haven't done, um, or the things that you believe that you're not versus, you know, true gratitude. Uh, not just the intellectualizing of that feeling, but the feeling itself, you know, um, or true joy or true happiness or true, um, uh, like thankfulness, uh, you know, being in that moment. And so it's easy to say like this, like positive, uh, like pile of acknowledgement is probably significantly smaller than the mountain that you could look at on the amount of, you know, shame and guilt and lack that we all feel. And so, uh, that we all go through. And so, um, because of this book and talking about, you know, these internal resources as a gift to myself and to kind of relieve some of this story that I've been building up on what it means to make this right or make this valuable or do it justice. Uh, I thought I just wanted to come back down to my um, internal resources and what it means for me to like look at these internal resources within myself and kind of use each episode as a little, essentially a love note to me and to you. Um, if you can identify with the resource that is the theme of that day. and. I don't know what I'm calling this yet, but I, I want to do 12 as like, you know, the 12 days of whatever holiday that you celebrate. But um, I want to do like the 12 days of intention or the 12, 12 days of whatever. I haven't come up with a name with it yet. But again, we're going into this messy and creative. Oh, also, before I get into my little love note um, around resilience, which is what today's theme is in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> uh, but I want to mention um, another thing that inspired this project is a conversation I've been having with one of my best friends. Her name's Lindsay Freeman. She's an extremely talented, wonderful human. She has brought so much transformation to my life. And just not only as a friend, but uh, also a woman in business, a fellow creative, a f like a fellow witchy bitch, like cosmos, astrology, the whole thing. She's just an incredible human, but she's actually doing a, um, a project in December. It's an intuition project. And it's just about the messy creative process of acknowledging and being who you are and, you know, just allowing that to be. And, uh, it's really, really cool. I absolutely love it. I'm participating in it. And, uh, it's essentially where you, you know what, I'm not even going to explain it because you know what, if that sounds, if you're like, oh, I need to call in more play, I need to call in more creativity. I need to, instead of like getting more, you know, oh, I want to plan for the new year. I want a business plan for the new year. I want to, you know, instead of getting like tighter, how can we get more playful? I mean, it's just like, it's coming back to the joy when you were a kid at the, of this time of year, like how to, that's kind of how I'm thinking about it. It's like unwrapping a present, but backwards, but at the end of it, the present gets to be the beautiful acknowledgement and recognition of all that you are. Um, and I know that if you don't know anything about the project, then that doesn't make any sense to you. But if you're intrigued, if you're sitting there being like, Hmm, that sounds interesting. And I could use more play. I could use more curiosity. I could use more joy. Then you just got to look into it. I will put it in the show notes so that you can easily just click and sign up. And then it comes through your inbox. And she is uh, doing just like 
incredibly fun things. And I just think, again, it's like a really great way to reframe this time of year with just a different perspective, potentially. Um, so go check it out. I will put the link, like I said, in the show notes so that you can find out all of the details of the magic all by yourself because you are a capable, powerful, autonomous adult human and, um, join us because it's going to be a really, really fun time. Okay. So what this is going to kind of look like, I'm completely winging it, but this is what I think it's going to look like. So I have a value inside of me, an asset, if you will, a resource going back to the book of soul of money. That is my own personal resilience. And for me, what that means is that in the face of all of the things that I faced in my life, I have still managed to believe that showing up here and sharing what's on my heart and showing up with integrity and reaching out to people and being who I am was worth fighting for, was worth continuing to value and explore. And so if you are a human living and breathing in the world, listening to this, I would invite you to address your own resilience and what that means for you. And so my hope for myself and for you is that whoever is reading this is that you realize that you have made it through every day of your life thus far. All of the good ones right next to all of the hard ones that you have been through probably unimaginable pain, um, unimaginable sadness, and that you not only are surviving, but by showing up and sitting down and listening to this podcast tells me another thing about who you are. It's that you're not only surviving and getting through it, but you are reaching out for community and resource to remind yourself that you are a valuable asset to the world that you still have growing to do, but you're willing to do the growing, that you're willing to surround yourself with not only people, but resource through this podcast to lean into that uncomfortability on what it means to grow. And that is a huge, huge thing to acknowledge and to take in that you are resilient. You are enough just as you are. And that this resilience, because it is something that as a human in the world we live in today, so many of us, all of us have in common, that it is not a coat of armor, but it is an invitation for connection, that it is a beautiful um, ally in life and in this period of transformation. And if you can remember, invite and lean in to your own personal resource of resilience on your hard days. I'm not saying that it's going to make them better. I will say that it will make, it will help you to remember that you're not alone in them. Um, and that you are strong enough, that you are steadfast enough in this journey that tomorrow will come and that you, whatever it means for you to continue to 
value and to remind yourself that your resilience is a superpower, that you are a powerful, capable being. And that by getting through, again, not just getting through, but by listening to resources like this, by leaning into community, that you are doing more than enough to show up and continue to, I hope, make yourself proud at the end of the day. Your resilience is a gift. It is not a weapon. It is not a coat of armor. It is a bridge for connection. It is a beautiful resource. And that on the days where you feel depleted in other resources, I hope you know that you can lean back on your own resilience. That it's always there as a friend, as an ally, and to get you through another day. And that by continuing to show up in that resilience, that they're going to get better. That not every day is going to be hard. That there are is beauty, glorious, juicy, delicious beauty sprinkled in amongst the hard days. And your resilience is there to carry you through. You are brave. You are enough. You are worth it. You're always worth it. Every single moment of every day, you are worth it. Ooh, that felt good. Take a deep breath with me. (sighs) Oh, that was good. That was fun. I hope that that felt as good for you as it did for me. I hope you can hear if that the smile on my face as I'm saying this, because it truly this is the episode that needed to happen. This is what I needed to do for me. Showing up for me, showing up for you. That's, that's the, (laughs) as Jalen Hurts, quarterback of the Eagles would say, keep the main thing, the main thing. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I'm happy. Thank you so much for being here with me. Um, I really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed any of this work, or at least the invitation to this work that um, I'm planting the seeds about within myself, I have been inspired since really thinking about this framework and these resources in a different way uh, over the last couple of days. I believe on December 27th, I'm going to be hosting a virtual workshop online. And it's about instead of thinking about resolutions, instead of thinking about change, um, instead of I've been using a lot of plant and garden analogies lately, instead of, you know, taking the plant out of the pot and planting it in new soil, because we think that's the problem. How do we fertilize the soil we're already in? And, uh, I think that's a, that's powerful that we don't necessarily need to change anything. What if what we had was just enough? Um, and, uh, I've also been, uh, challenging myself, which this is like kind of related. This is like adjacent to that point is like, what if I challenged myself instead of saying like, I need to eat less sugar or I need to um, (laughs) drink less wine, which might be the case, but instead of it, it, it sits in me in some sort of funky way. I notice that when I'm like, gosh, I need to, you know, eat less sugar. I need to eat less sugar. It's like a, it's like a judgment and it feels like I'm judging myself. And if I was sitting down with a friend and I said, you need to eat less sugar, that's, I would be like, you're Kate, you're, that's fucking rude. (laughs) Um, you don't know them. You don't know their life. Now I'm referring to me, but that doesn't mean that the actual energy of what I'm saying doesn't still doesn't feel nice. So instead of that, I've been reframing it a little bit and saying, if I want to, um, instead of being like, oh, you need to eat less sugar. I'm saying, what if I just ate more vegetables? Like, what if I went out of my way to eat more 
of something that would make me feel great, like, or just better or whatever. Like, oh, you need to eat less sugar. How about what if I just ate more vegetables? Like, or I ate more fruit. Like, do you see how the energy of it changes? Instead of saying, oh, you need to drink less. I'm like, what if I just drank more water? Oh, you need to drink less wine. Uh, right. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Maybe I do. I, I don't know. But it's like, instead, grab your emotional support water bottle and drink more water. Because it's like, yeah, we can walk around saying, oh, we need to, we need to do this and we need to drink more water, drink more water, hydrate, whatever. But when you change the, like, it's just the flip side of the one thing. So you're like, oh, I need to drink less alcohol. Maybe that's the truth. And also instead of how it sits inside of you and how it feels, maybe we say, oh, well, I, how about what if I just try and drink more water? Oh, oh, okay. Like, let's try it. You know, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. But anyway, um, so really this workshop at the end of the month is about instead of, you know, trying to supplement our life with resolutions and restrictions or change, what if we're just fertilizing the soil we're already in? And so the invitation for the workshop is that we're going to look at these inner internal resourcing and this internal resource system that we have and uh, how we can essentially build a spirit team or a team of oracles, if you will, around these resources that so on days when we feel a little bit scared or a little bit tired or a little bit whatever, that we can call on our spirit team, just as you would a friend to say, hey, I'm doing something really scary today. I'm going to, I want to call on courage. That's an internal resource that I have available to me at any given time. I know because here are all of the examples in the ways in the past that here's the evidence of my courage. I know that she's in there and I want her like by my side, stuck to my hip today. And so it's like a little bit of neuroplasticity, you know, brain work, but then it's also the integration of the creative. So that will be happening on December 27th intentionally because between Christmas and New Year's, you know, that's when all the icky, stuff can kind of come in and scarcity and the energy just gets weird, just gets weird. So we're all just going to get together virtually. We're going to hang out, you know, drink some bubbly water, drink some bubbles, whatever is feels fun for you. And we're just going to hang out and we're going to get clear on not just intentions, but who we are so that in the coming year we can, you know, become our own best friends again. Um, and build the bridge back to ourselves so we can trust ourselves when we set goals, when we set intentions that they're coming from a place that feels of integrity to us and not the noise out there. You know, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. So if that feels like something that feels fun to you, again, I, I will, I don't have it like all together yet, but I'll put a link again in the show notes. Also, I'll put it on Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram, uh, for the wait list or when the workshop opens, I think it'd probably be like $20, 25 bucks, probably somewhere around in there. Um, and, uh, yeah, and I'm excited to hang out with all of you, but I hope that this kind of practice is beneficial and that it felt as energetically fun for you as it did for me. And so for the next 11 episodes in the month of December, this is what we're going to do. We're going to sit down. We're going to talk about an internal resource. And then I'm going to write a love note to the both of us that we can listen to so we can ground ourselves back in who we are and what matters to us in a time when it's very easy to get swept up in what's going on out there, out there in the crazy world of sales and consumerism and all that juicy, whatever, um, patriarchal things. Let's just say it, say what it is. Anyway, um, as I always end every episode with, or as I always used to end every episode with, it still remains true. And I will continue to say it that time, time is a resource that we never get back. And I, oh, it's going to make me emotional. (laughs) Um, I'm proud of us, not only just for, uh, 
you know, our resilience, but that if you can stay soft and curious in this world that is so heartbreaking and scary and devastating, especially right now, um, I'm proud of us. I'm proud of us to never lose that aspect of our humanity. When the world breaks your heart, let it, but also let it inform you um, on how you want to go out and use the integrity inside of your heart to make it better, to contribute in a positive way, um, contribute in a way that makes impact and change. I think that's beautiful. I'm proud of us for that. Um, I just appreciate you taking the time to spend this time with me because again, it's not a renewable resource. We never get it back. And I don't take that privilege lightly. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. And until next time, like we always used to say, and we will continue to stay, say, always, always stay hungry. Well, there you have it. Another episode of the She's Hungry podcast. If you love this episode, please share it on your social platforms. It would mean the world to me. Also, wherever you're listening to this episode, make sure you're subscribed or following along so you never miss an update. And if you're feeling extra cheeky, then leave a review. Until next time.